Welcome to our first episode of Devil in the Details, and I'm your host, Street News TV. This episode is going to be about a phenomenal blogger that came from the city of Chicago by the name of Zach TV. He was murdered in downtown Chicago. He's identified as Zach Stoner, known on YouTube as Zach TV One. Multiple shots were fired. Stone was hit at least once in the head. It appears to show a group of people at the scene getting into another vehicle, then driving off before police arrived. On May 30th, 2018, Zachary Zach TV Stoner was ambushed after leaving the Refuge nightclub located in the downtown area. Zach often talked about how dangerous the city was and put a lot of emphasis on keeping himself safe. But unfortunately, on this particular night, he wasn't able to get off a shot. So it's, it's yeah, you see shit on the regular basis and shot like, like death is a norm. That's regular. And yeah. it's sad to say, but that's fucked up. Fittest, if you could survive in the city of Chicago, you could survive anywhere. Zach TV was the first blogger to go to many different neighborhoods in Chicago to conduct an interview. You could only imagine how dangerous this was even though there was a lot of shaky situations. The people that didn't care for him because they felt like he was fueling some of the wars. He still continued to do interviews. Zach had an eye for talent and interviewed a lot of the rappers that are famous now before they were famous. Even though he was good in a lot of hoods, he still kept his gun on him just in case. I don't think no one expected Zach to lose his life, but in the city of Chicago, anybody can catch a bullet, whether it's meant for them or not. Zach TV was actually interviewing everybody in the city of Chicago he was giving everybody that just do, and it was some sets that didn't like the fact that Zach was interviewing their ops. Zach TV was also investigating the Kanika Jenkins case and was one of the only people that was actually unveiling the facts in her case. Eventually, he started receiving calls telling him he shouldn't speak on the case again. A lot of people told me plenty of times before to leave this, leave, leave this case alone. Man, my business finish getting my money and go on with life that has nothing to do with Zach leave it alone you understand what I'm saying numerous times like like a thousand times niggas on the street people in the industry people that's connected everybody was telling me just leave it alone <clears throat> this lady she didn't she she called my yo this is the crazy shit she called my business phone right I first off I'm like yo what's up who this Yo, Zach, I need to tell you something. So I'm like, yo, stop playing. Like, what's up? I'm going to hang up. She started talking. You know what I'm saying? Talking about the case. So I'm like, who are you? So you saying do not. So I should never talk about the case again. Don't put shit. Don't even go into it. Because they're watching you. You have a, an account. You have an account. That they're watching you. Okay, okay, and, and what's it? What's like it? I said, if you look into Joel Coma, you will stop. Okay, so that that okay. I'm gonna fall back from the case, ma'am. You know, I, I haven't been posting anything on Facebook because for some reason I'm blocked from Facebook. So I'm I blocking everybody. They blocked me. Oh, hold up, you're blocked. They've, they've been blocking me for comments. Wow. That's why I said. And every time I, get, I put something in, I'm getting a, a, a threat. What? I need to shut up. I'm getting a threat. Well, those that are coming and telling and getting the information out there, I would say, those that are getting the information out there and getting, getting it right, they're blocking you. So is that why I was blocked off Facebook? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, t so t t tell me this. And you say you will not go to the cops, correct? I'm not going. So, okay, um, cause you are, are you from Chicago? No, I'm not. You don't want to give out your location, your city and state, no. do you? No. Uh -uh. There were a lot of people that were under the notion that Zach TV's death had something to do with the Kanika Jenkins case, but in all actuality, it didn't. Zach TV had went to a show that was being hosted by King Dave, 
this show was a talent showcase in which it was the only one that was happening at the time. King Dave would pack out venues with at least 500 people once a month. By the time Zach called King Dave to enlist his artists, the list was actually full, but King Dave made an exception because him and Zach were good friends. Zach ended up going to the show and appeared to be enjoying himself. According to witnesses, Zach pretty much mingled and network with people while he was there. According to sources, there was a set of guys that were there that beefs with Zach's neighborhood. They go by the Perry Avenue boys and are located on 107th and Perry, while Zach is from 105 MMG, which is located on 105th and State. An artist that was performing began dissing, and it soon became a back and forth thing between the artists. There was guys in the audience that wanted to do something afresh, and according to sources, Zach stopped him. Zach noticing that the situation was heating up chose to separate himself. He told the two guys that he was there for, that he was about to leave, and he made AMG Fresh, who was intoxicated, get in the car with him. The Perry boys seen Fresh hop in with Zach, and that's what made them get on the car. T Streets and AMG Fresh's girlfriend was with them as well. AMG Fresh and T Streets were in the back, and Fresh's girlfriend was in the front pass. Before leaving, they pulled up to Fresh's car, and his girl hopped out and crunk it up. She was gonna follow them. They left about 125, they were headed down Clark Street. Zach ended up driving two blocks down Clark Street and at 1.29 a.m., a minivan pulled up on the side of Zach's Jeep and began shooting. Although it is not clear as to exactly who shot back, we do know because of ballistics that either Streets or Fresh did indeed shoot back. Zach ended up being hit in his shoulder and behind his ear. T Streets ended up being grazed. Zach TV had a 40 caliber f and N under his seat that he was never able to get to. When the police arrived about 1.35 a.m., they found Zach in his Jeep alone, and he still had a pulse. He was transported to Northwest Memorial, where he was pronounced at 4.20 a.m. Both T Streets and Fresh were thought to have backdoored Zach because of the circumstance. After the shooting took place, Streets and Fresh jumped in the car with Fresh's girl. It later came out that they thought the guys might slide back, so they got out their jam. Sadly, T Streets ended up being gunned down a week later on the day of Zach's funeral. AMG would end up passing on October 25th, 2019 from unknown circumstance. At first, it was reported that he was unalive, but that wasn't true. The 2018 killing of Zach TV, a trailblazer in the perilous genre of gangland reporting he called Hood CNN, seemed destined to go unsolved, even though gunmen attacked him at a downtown Chicago street line with surveillance cameras. Police never announced the arrest and the shooting of Zachary Stoner, who drew a national YouTube following, filling a media niche with up-close stories about the lives and deaths of gang members and affiliated rappers from places other reporters were afraid to go to. Well, Zach TV one one more I can say real as hell, bro. He did shit niggas never did. Like these interviewers would never do. Niggas so, would never do the shit he did. To everybody out there, I don't give a fuck who you is, what you talk about, what your, your your opinion is. If you a known rapper, celebrity, when you signed up for this, you should know when something happened in the media, your ass is going to world star. DJ Academics, Say Cheese, Vlad, and Zach TV. In that order. We're not picking on anybody. If you a big star like Tay 600, E Day, King Yellow, Billionaire, Black 600, Breezy, whatever the case may be, when something big in the news happen, it's our job to report it. It's really my job to report it. I am the hood CNN. I give motherfuckers the real outlet and the news of what's really going on. I will be in Vegas Sunday night. I'm flying to Vegas to get the other sides of the story. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not picking on nobody, I'm not choosing sides. I know what y'all really want to see. I know who y'all really want to see on Zach TV. You haven't been on Zach TV. We will make that happen. That's a fact. I love y'all. 10 5 MG. Free the guys. Free the guys. I repeat the guys. Who is CNN? What up? But police records obtained by the Associated Press reveal investigators believe they solved his homicide years ago when they arrested members of the South Side Chicago's Perry Avenue gang. The prosecutors in 2019 declined to prosecute, and police were forced to release the suspects. Police say the Cook County State's Attorney's Office cited the possibility that the two sides in a shooting on May 30, 2018 were mutual combatants, a disputed legal concept that's a throwback to duels between nobles or prearranged gunfights in the Wild West. That prosecutors passed on charges on those grounds raises questions about whether Chicago gangs can literally get away with murder when it's unclear who initiated a shooting and who returned fire in self-defense. The case and arrest reports obtained in their open records request offer previously unreported details about what may have precipitated Stoner's killing after he left the crowded Clark Street Refuge Bar. Relying on video 
eyewitnesses, cell phone location data, and ballistics on a bullet removed from the 30-year-old's brain, police arrested five suspects, ages 19 to 22, in 2018 and 2019, on probable cause of first-degree murder. Prosecutors also cited inconsistent witnesses as a reason to not prosecute. Two of the suspects have since been killed. Another, identified by a witness, told police, I didn't pull the trigger. It's crazy to know that somebody who did everything they could to help the city out ended up going out like that. But not only was he killed unjustly in cold blood, when he was also an innocent bystander shit, police called his alleged killer. Didn't even do nothing to him. It's a crazy world like that, y'all. Keep your eyes open. Try to stay at least two steps ahead. This was the first episode of Devil in the Details. Make sure that y'all like, share, and subscribe. Rest in peace to Zach TV. Shout out to the SN TV gang. It's your boy. I'm out.